what's up and welcome back to another day <coughs> uh, another day in the life of being a mobile mechanic so we are heading right now to go repair a I think it was a 2013 if I'm not mistaken I could be wrong uh, Ford Transit van it's 3500 I checked this van last week already um, and the client stated that the, the van was overheating or running a little hot and she had to keep adding coolant. Well, I checked it for a coolant leak, couldn't find a leak, but then what I did notice is that the low speed fan wasn't coming on at all and that the high speed fan was blowing but it was kind of weak. So what I've done to test it is uh, checked my power and ground to the low speed fan and it had power and ground but uh the fan wasn't coming on so i took a, uh i gave it like a little tap and then it came on and it would kind of didn't sound good when it was running and it would kick back off again so uh we got a brand new fan assembly for it in the back and we're heading there now we're going to put the fan in i believe they want to add an oil change so uh we may be doing an oil change on it as well and it looks like we got some weather behind us, so hopefully that holds up long enough for us to finish this job. So that's what we're doing today. Um, I appreciate everyone who's subscribed and who's following along. Um, so, yeah, let's go get started. I noticed uh, coolant dripping underneath the vehicle as soon as I got here and that wasn't there last time I came out and looked at it this was all dry last time and I'm thinking that it's gonna be this heater hose down here so I need to figure out what hose that is and if we can get it or not and let the client know yeah so it definitely looks like that heater hose there just goes I don't know how I'm gonna figure out what hose that is without comes off the there's so many this will be fun Right, so it's possible that could just be a clamp or a heater hose. I'll have to investigate that. But for now, we need to get this fan assembly changed out so we can at least solve that problem. And that's another problem we got coming. So let's get started. <laughs> It's starting to rain now, so I'm going to hurry up and try to just put this van back together and reschedule this because there's more involved than I thought, and I don't think we're going to be able to do it in this weather. So we're just going to have to, that's what we got to do. So it's been a change of plans. There's a lot more involved in taking that van assembly out than I originally thought and I don't have that time frame because I have a one o'clock appointment it did stop raining thankfully so I'm just gonna take a lunch and head to my one o'clock appointment and we are gonna pick up finish this video tomorrow all right it's tomorrow and we are back in my driveway at the house so I looked up a bunch of stuff online and according to everybody on the web on the internet because everything on the internet is true they can't put anything on the internet that isn't true where'd you hear that the, the internet. internet you have to remove this bumper cover and pretty much this whole front cap has to come completely out the way 
but I think I have an idea to make this a lot quicker where you don't have to take all that stuff off because all we need to do is sneak this engine fan assembly out of here so yeah so check this out all right so let's get all these speed clips out of the way first and we have two 10 millimeters that we're gonna zip out the way also I feel like I've done this before. Up oh, three ten millimeters. Three, three fabulous flyers. Ah, ah, ah. One more there. Okay. Uh, we have to remove both these headlight assemblies too. So let's go ahead and do that. It's a T30. I think this is just gonna pop out of here. Yep. Should just come out. Yes. We got our wire harness back here. We can unclip there. And just unplug all your light bulbs. that <clears throat> place that out of the way same thing over here all right problem solved looks like it's burned out I believe I have I do well, now it's definitely burned out not a big deal though because I have a pack of them in my truck so we'll just get her one of those so we're gonna take these out um, I believe that might be a 12 no I believe wrong so it's still gonna be 10 but what I'm gonna do is switch to my ratchet Unless I can get this guy in there. Yeah, if something cool like this, you can, you can get in there with that. But this is a 10 millimeter. And you can't get that one. Works for the top. Cordless ratchet would be good here too. I broke mine. Okay, that's that one. Just throwing all our bolts in that up there. Same over here. So it's easier to just take these two tens off from here instead of taking this bracket off here. So that's why we did that. You can do whatever you want. All right, now we're gonna take those might be 12s. I know, let's find out. Nope, it's not a 12. Probably a 13. So those are 13s. I'm gonna zip these two 13s out. One here and one there. Zip those out. Never mind. Yep, they put that torqued in there good. 
All right, next we got two T25 bolts that we're gonna take off so that it'll release the bumper cover off the fender here. See if I can get my gun in there. Quarter inch ratchet. That'll work. <clears throat> Same thing over here. Well, this ratchet works great for that. Look at that. If you have a ratchet like this, swivel head on it. Works perfect. Almost there. And I believe these will come off like that and maybe remove that T25 there so push that aside push this aside so you see this T25 right here that's the one we're going after get this you get that one out your way and then you can kind of flex that a little bit we don't need it to flex much just a little bit so perfect right, so in the corner here you have a 10 bolt here and one on the other side. We're gonna remove those also. See if we can get in there without ratchet. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Same thing over here, you got one more on the other side. So see how it's starting to loosen up now. Now we're going to get those two 13 bolts out there and there. And same on that side. Which I'm going to need a bigger, I'm have to get a bigger breaker bar for that. But once we get those out of the way, then I'll show you what we do next. So I'm actually going to use my half inch drive set up here just because it's a uh, really big ratchet. So it's got a lot of leverage, but it's still going to be a 13. I'm just using this to help break this loose. Because they are a little tight. <clears throat> Hopefully it's just two bolts down there. Hoping that there's not one I can't see. All right, so now, kept me a second. 
now that I got that little broken loose, I'm gonna switch to my uh, 3H drive setup. My gun here. Should be able to zip them out now. Let's see what we're working with here. Okay, so you gotta pull these things out. So you got this like nipple here that's gonna go through this slot. Get your drain bucket in place under there. So you uh, about to start disconnecting some coolant lines here. I'm gonna start with this one. Just gonna push in, you know, pinch these gray tabs in. And it's that easy. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Take your clip removal tool. I'm gonna disconnect this hose here. A pair of pliers and you can pinch these clamps. I think we're just gonna remove that upper radiator hose out of our way completely. Let's see if we can get it to lock in place. There we go. Lock that in place. Slide them out the way. Ouch. It's a little hot. This is probably gonna make a mess. Yeah, made a mess. That's okay. I'm thinking this hose, as long as it's disconnected from the radiator down there, it may not be in the way, so we may not take the operator hose off completely maybe just remove it from the radiator let's see how that works out i'm gonna pinch this clamp this hose off here These hoses get stuck, you can take your speed clip tool and kind of push the hose off like that. Just uh, careful not to tear it. Let's see if this might make a mess too. It will. Let's get this over here. I don't think I'm gonna win this coolant battle here. That'll work. All right, we got our two plugs here for the fan motors. One's your high and one's your low. Just gonna pinch and pull those out. Pull these uh, hood release cable out the way. Just like that. That'll, that'll help out there. Just gonna take this large socket I have. What we're gonna do is wedge it down in here and that's gonna hold everything on a tilt force like that 
so we can have room to get this out here. Do same on the other side. This might be enough space with just this one side propped up. <clears throat> Could probably do it like that. Let's give it a whirl. So the only thing holding this in now is the two locking tabs. Way down at the bottom here. Now, if it's hot, you may want to let it cool off first. Get your long flathead screwdriver like this one. And you can reach down to those little locking tabs and pry them out. Alright, let's see if I can get a flashlight down here so you can see what I'm talking about. And if not, then once I get it out, I'll show you. We've already got that released, we do, so let's move on to the next side. There we go. Don't worry about that tab, I'll show you as soon as I get this out of here, but for now... So close, ladies and gentlemen. See what they didn't put this stupid coolant house in there. Put this out of the way. So we're going to have to remove this power steering reservoir and this air intake tube out of the way. Pops out also. All right, should be able to bring it out now, so.
swing this out of the way. also just to see if it gives us a little more space <laughs> look at that perfecto voila all right so we got it done Got the whole fan assembly out. All we did was loosen up the front cap and used two big sockets to kind of pry it forward. And then we went ahead and removed the air intake system, slid out the way, took the lower radiator radiator hose off, and the upper radiator hose off as well got that out the way and it gave us enough room to slide it out and you know what if you were doing a radiator replacement you could do the same exact procedure because I have enough room to get my radiator out also so yeah which is right here so just be careful to slow nipple here when you're pulling a fan out so you don't break it because if you do you're going to be looking at buying a whole new radiator alright so I went ahead and compared our new fan to our old fan and it's exactly the same connectors are the same so now we're going to go ahead and slip this in Tell you, it seems like every time you're taking a part out of the car it goes in a lot easier than it goes out that's for sure all right guys so i'm gonna go ahead and just put this back together i'm not gonna film this i'm just gonna go ahead and knock it out so i'll be back in a little bit all right so we got running you can hear those fans powered up now. I know I didn't film this before, but before the high side fan was on like it was a low speed fan, and the low speed fan didn't come on at all. So trust me, it's a huge difference. But now we got both fans running full blast like they're supposed to. All right, so now both fans are working now. This is a repair well done I guess you can say um, it's fixed so uh, that's gonna do it for today I'm I'm tired I'm beat so I'm gonna finish picking up here and I'm done for today so I just thank you for watching hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.